Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Harvest Horror Fest. Welcome, welcome, Nerdorinos. Uh, this is the final episode of the third annual Harvest Harvest Horror Fest. For this one, we will end with a great jump scare horror movie with an excellent music to help set the mood of this movie. And, uh, you know, Matt, do you want to tell us more about this movie? Uh, This is uh, episode 194 as well. Episode 194, the final episode of the final Harvest Horror Fest ever, unless we continue doing the pod into October next year, which we might, I don't know. We seem to be getting some traction lately, so that's kind of nice, because, uh, Mike, uh, I'll discuss it later, but uh, we got ourselves another giveaway. I don't know how many weeks that is in a row. I think it's turning into months in a row now, but we got another I think so. movie giveaway. It's pretty sweet. Man, that's awesome. I uh, I think our uh, listeners definitely appreciate the opportunity to get some free movies. Uh, I know we love getting free movies. Who doesn't like a free movie, honestly, unless you're not a movie person and then you probably wouldn't like it. But again, it has that word, that magical word. It's my favorite kind of beer. It's my favorite kind of clothes. It's my favorite kind of food. Free. (laughs) Nice, nice. I know free food does taste better. I don't know why. It doesn't matter how bad it is. It tastes delightful most of the time. So, all right, Mike, you know we originally wanted to do the remake or spiritual sequel of the uh, uh, Jordan Peele's Candyman that was supposed to be coming out this month, but, you know, Apocalypse. So, currently, according to IMDb, the spiritual sequel to our current review film, Candyman, from 1992, will be out in August 27th of 2021 so looks like we'll get to do two candy mans hopefully in two years so that'll be all right i'm really really interested to see what jordan peele does with it but we are not here to discuss that film yet yeah yeah i was excited to see that one too because it seems like everything jordan peele touches is really um good so i was interested in seeing that as well yeah i'm kind of disappointed but hey you know what we got to watch the original I have not seen this movie in a very, very, very long time, Uh, at least half my age now, uh, maybe even longer. I'm thinking I was possibly in either middle school or high school the last time I watched this, and it did not have the same impact back then as it does today. Again, you know, the world has changed a lot. I'm a lot older. I'm a lot more educated, so I can read into the things in this movie a lot, such as the social commentary and things like that. But we will get into that right after I do the breakdown right now. Candyman 1992 was directed by Bernard Rose, written by Clive Barker and Bernard Rose. And it stars Virginia Madsen, Tony Todd, Xander Berkeley, Cassie Lemons, Vanessa Williams, and Dewan Guy. Here's a little synopsis for our unofficial sponsor of the Real Film Nerds Podcast, IMDb, a.k.a. Amazon IMDb. The Candyman, a murderous soul with a hook for a hand, is accidentally summoned to reality by a skeptic grad student researching the monster's myth. All right. Great, man. I, I enjoyed that. That synopsis, uh, that was very uh, nicely done. Uh, Thank you, unofficial sponsor, uh, IMDb. Well, I'll answer for them. You're welcome, Mike. (laughs) All right. Yeah, Matt, um, I hadn't seen this movie in many, many years as well and was pleasantly surprised and enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, It is a horror movie, but it has kind of more to say than just horror and definitely did not pick up on that stuff when I was younger. I think more I was looking for just the scares of the Candyman and uh, maybe some of the gore factor, which there's plenty of that in this, but I actually liked, without getting into too much spoilers, Matt, I like the way that a lot of the things were portrayed because you kind of didn't see it. So I like that. I thought that was scarier. Well, it's a nice slow burn. You know, they really, really build the story and they really build the urban legend of Candyman before they start throwing you into 
what he is and who he does and how he came to be. I mean, I honestly, yeah, this is a, a frightening movie on certain levels, gory, things like that. But one of the most frightening parts of this whole film is the actual story of how Candyman came to be. Because I could see that being, I don't know if it is a true story, but I could see that being a true story, especially during the times of slavery. Yeah, this movie touches on a lot of different things, even uh, where uh, the urban legend myth was the most prevalent was in the, um, was it Caprini Green uh, neighborhood in the, the in Chicago, which is a notorious, uh, tough area of Chicago. And uh, that was, you know, interesting as well, all the different things that they were trying to kind of portray in this movie. Well, and also how a drug dealer capitalizes on the name of Candyman, takes it as his own to sell drugs. Now, you never see him like actually selling drugs, but you can tell that's what he is. He's decked out in really nice clothing. He walks around with a hook and he has his gang of boys with him. So clearly he's um, maybe not a drug dealer, but he's definitely a thug gangster of some kind that's just capitalizing on the fear of this urban legend of Candyman. And this is all before you even are introduced to the real monster yeah i do like that i like the build up there there's quite a bit of storytelling in this matt and uh that is nice is nice to see and and i think the um the soundtrack on this or or the the was it's very creepy and like very well done and i i felt like it really helped build the mood also like as it kind of progressed and i like that as well i thought this was just a really good movie I think that's one area of films that's always kind of drugged through the mud and people don't really think about much is how important the soundtracks really are. So I always, you know, you're not going to like this, but I'm going to do it anyways. I always go to my uh, dear friend, I wish he was my friend, John Williams in Star Wars. Star Wars would not be the level of film that it is today without that incredible soundtrack. Oh, no, absolutely, Matt. Um, you know, mentioning John Williams. I mean, John Williams and uh, Jaws, if that didn't happen, I don't think Jaws would have been the movie that it is. Yeah, he's responsible for a lot of incredible soundtracks. Jaws, In and Jones, Star Wars, Jurassic Park. He's done, you know, yeah, he's buddy-buddy with Steven Spielberg, but he's done some of the most iconic songs and films in the history of film. But this, as well has very good soundtrack like you're saying and it really can make or break a film if you ask me and a lot it doesn't get as much credit as it's due yeah no definitely i i mean i i don't think i could just i can't even imagine watching a movie like this or a movie like star wars uh jaws uh jurassic park without that incredible soundtrack like the directors have and just be like when it adds in you're like oh how could I've had it without this? You know, like it's, it's such an integral piece, but that's never really mentioned as much. I feel like they're overlooked a lot. The, the sound, how it just impacts everything in the movie. All right, Mike, well, you want me to do a little business? Oh yes, Matt. Uh, I know we have another giveaway, so let's, uh, let's, let's talk about that. Yes, we do kids. We have another film giveaway just for you. Now, this is for a new film I know nothing about. I just received it literally today. It is called Spell. And it comes out October 30th. That is this Friday, just in time for Halloween. Perfect. So, here you go. Okay, so the director is Mark Tondurai. The writer is Kurt Wimmer. It stars Omari Hardwick, Loretta Devine, Lorraine Burroughs and John Beasley. Here's a little synopsis. A man crash lands in rural Appalachia and awakens in the attic of a traditional hoodoo practitioner. He desperately tries to break free from her dark magic and save his family from a sinister ritual before the rise of the blood moon. Dude, that is a perfect giveaway for this week. Our final Harvest Horror Fest and we have a horror slash thriller giveaway. I mean... That's awesome. Yeah, and and I believe there is a blood moon that's going to happen on the 31st. Dude, perfect. So here's the uh, little tidbit I should read that because I'm supposed to read it. This Halloween, prepare yourself for the terrifying suspense thriller Spell, starring Omari Hardwick from the TV show Power and 
Loretta Devine. Uh, Marquis, played by Omari Hardwick, awakens from a plane crash, imprisoned by a mysterious woman practicing hoodoo magic. He desperately tries to break free to save his family from the sinister rituals that await. Spell is premiering at home on all digital platforms October 30th. It is rated R, and it is from Paramount Pictures. Thank you again, Paramount Pictures. You guys are freaking amazing. So, um, Mike, I don't know. What should we ask our listeners to do to win a copy of Spell this week? Ooh, uh, you know, Matt, uh, to go with this uh, week and, and this urban legend, maybe we should have them tell us about an urban legend. Oh, dude, I like that. That's a good one. Or just just a title of one or something, and and you know that that'd be cool. I think. Well, okay, Mike. See, I wanted to ask this question. We discussed a little bit earlier before the pod, Mike. Um, do you remember any urban legends growing up as kids from back home in uh, the hood of SV? Uh, so really, the only one I remember is from uh, you know campfires and Boy Scouts, and it had to do with this guy and this hook, and you know picking him up like a hitchhiker and i feel like the moral of the story was like don't pick up hitchhikers because they could kill you kind of thing um and then i think later on in life i feel like this was later i heard about that the bloody mary or whatever you say her name in the mirror and and that that's it that's all i remember man all right so the most predominant one i remember growing up as a kid i'm shocked you didn't hear this one but you remember the old charleston bridge Oh, yeah. yeah. On the way to Tombstone. That one always stuck in the back of my head. Now, this is probably an urban legend that everybody has everywhere. But so the Charleston Bridge, before they replaced it, the bridge is still there. You can walk on it, but you can't drive on it now. It's a single lane, rickety old, um, I want to say steel or iron bridge that clacked and clanked when you drove across it. And it was how you got to Tombstone from Sierra Vista. And it was just... Freaky as hell. I remember as a kid, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I photographed it multiple times. Love that bridge. But anyways, the urban legend is if you come up to the bridge and you see a woman standing next to the bridge, you need to pick her up and take her to the other side of the river. And if you didn't, uh, your car would crash trying to crash cross the bridge. But if you did pick her up, there would be a wet stain in the back of your car where she was sitting. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think that is a common urban uh, uh, legend for all the different bridges throughout America. Now, the I've heard different things on this, but the reason why she's trying to get from one side of the river to the other side of the river is that like one of her kids got loose and is like swimming down the river or something, or she was trying to save one of her kids and she drowned in the river and she's trying to get to the other side to save him or something. It, it, I've heard many different versions when I was growing up. But yeah, that, I think that's a pretty prevalent urban myth for uh, most areas. So that's one I really he- heard a lot. And then uh, do you remember that uh, uh, the one that our buddy Wyatt used to talk about all the time and he thought they were legitimately real? I don't think I remember it. Why don't you jog my memory, man? The red eyes. Red eyes? You no, don't remember don't why you're talking no. about this? No, How him no, and no, Ivan went camping and they saw all these red eyes? Oh, all the right. The chupacabra? Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He didn't elaborate much on that other than when they were camping and he saw all these red eyes looking back at him and they were afraid to go out in the forest in the middle of the night and he wanted to go pee and he couldn't go pee. And <laughs> I remember that. Good times. Good times. Nice, man. Nice. Well, uh, Matt, uh, I guess with that, I wanted to ask you, uh, what are you drinking, good sir? I was going to say, I was going to roll into, speaking of good times, Mike. (laughs) Well, Mike, thank you for asking. And as promised, I'm drinking a Samuel Adams Oktoberfest. Awesome, Matt. Awesome. Awesome. So what IPA do we have today, Michael? So Matt, as also promised, I am not drinking an IPA. I am drinking pumpkin spice latte from a a brewery called uh, Swamp Head Brewery. And uh, it's a white stout brewed with spices and blonde roast coffee. Does it taste like the uh, pumpkin spice latte? 
um no not not uh as as uh pumpkiny uh as i guess the uh psl from starbucks but uh it's quite tasty it's a good beer i've never had a psl so i i don't know what they taste like but uh, uh can i call you a basic magic bitch now? <laughs> yes you can <laughs> i want to find that beer for next year i want to hunt that down and find that if you find it just mail it to me just one can just to have it on the okay pod. just just one you just want to have it on 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 your on your mantle no on the pod but i mean yeah i'll drink it and i'll, I'll mount it to the wall okay nice god i very, found those the nice other day fan. oh dude when i was back home you know uh not to get dark and my mom's gonna hate this but um as they're getting closer and closer to the end of their lives uh i'm helping clean my parents house and you know do things like that and get rid of shit and uh, I came across a bunch of photographs. I mean, I don't know where they came from. I'm sure they were in my bedroom when my dad took it over and just threw everything in the garage. But he took all my uh, photographs and threw them all in a backpack just randomly. I mean, negatives, photos, family photos, not just um, photos that I did in school, in college and high school, just all kinds of photos. I mean, there's pictures of my aunt in there. There's pictures of my dad and uncle when my grandma passed, like all kinds of stuff. And I started wow. going through some of this and I found the pictures from my freshman year. I, di- I did not know they even existed because we did them when we were really drunk. But we took pictures of our living room, the infamous living room. So now I have proof of what we did. Oh, interesting. Okay. Not to tell another story, but we... uh freshman year of college we you know you're not supposed to have beer in dorms well we snuck beer in um we would cut one side of every single beer box or case that we had we cut it out and we'd staple it to the living room wall by the end of the semester well, okay i mean not semester by the end of the year that sounds better instead of semester <laughs> yeah make it longer we Matt. Know it was the end of the semester but by the end of the year the entire living room was covered almost twice over with beer boxes and we took a bunch of pictures of us in our living room of decorated beer boxes and a large majority was sam adams oktoberfest nice so anyways all right um on to uh me asking my questions so speaking of incredible stories mike how does Candyman relate to the marvel cinematic universe Oh Matt, that that is a wonderful question, and um, so uh, the MCU for this one wasn't too hard to dig up. Uh, the art director David Lassen uh, on uh, Candyman was also the supervising art director on Ant Man. Nice man, nice. So we continue. Yeah, the streak continues. That, that's yeah. a that's a four for four for the Harvest Horror Fest, Michael. Yes, perfect score. Except for those uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, right? Oh, God. You don't have to talk about that. That's terrible. (laughs) Uh, uh, Anyway, to bring up happier news, um, (laughs) it's now spoiler territory, Matt. So uh, what would you like to spoil about this movie? Here's the real question, Mike. Do you think she did all the murdering herself and Candyman was just manipulating her through her own mind? Or do you think the Candyman was really doing the murdering? You know, I I don't know. It's hard to tell. It kind of seems like it was her and uh, Candyman kind of was like possessing her. But it's hard to tell because, uh, you know, when she wakes up from these uh, episodes, she's like just filthy covered and like stuff. So it, it kind of leads to that. But, you know, it could have gone either way. I don't know. Hard to hard to say, Matt. I'm gonna go with uh, she did all the murdering herself, but was either being controlled or manipulated by the Candyman. I don't think the Candyman could interact with our physical world at all. But again, that's just my theories on the film. Okay, all right, Matt. Earlier mentioned uh, some of the social issues. In, uh, do you want to bring up any of that stuff in 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 the spoiler territory? Well, like one of the biggest social issues slash social commentary besides the uh i don't i don't want to say gentrification but the um taboo of projects 
is that our main character points out when she gets um, assaulted by the Candyman drug dealer or gangster or whatever, Helen Lyle, I don't remember the name of the gangster other than the Candyman, they suspect that man had murdered multiple people under the name and guise of Candyman, not the monster. Like the monster honestly didn't come about until she started, Helen started getting into it. But um, she points out when she's at the police station that it takes a white woman to be assaulted for the police to do anything in that particular projects or part of town when there's literally other people being murdered, black women, uh, kids, whatever, and the cops are just kind of like, no, we're not going to go over there. But all she has to be is a white man gets assaulted and they lock down the entire neighborhood, the entire projects. I, I mean, this is you know, 92. So would have probably been filmed in 90, maybe 91 back then, you know, real film took a little longer. I mean, that's quite the statement even back then that we're still dealing with today. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and Chicago is still a hotbed for, uh, crazy, um, gang violence and stuff. Even, even now, um, I went there a few years ago and I couldn't believe what I was hearing on the news. It was like, all right, so th- it's Fourth of July weekend, and uh, so we're gonna try and make sure that everyone's out. And they were—I don't know—they they listed some a massive amount of police officers, and they're like, "We're not gonna be like last year where there's 200 shootings." And I was like, "Oh, good God!" <laughs> like, it's like a war zone nuts. over there, man. In certain parts of town, yeah, and it's crazy. And uh, you know, maybe it is just the police not wanting to endanger their own lives or i mean you know i don't want to get too political or talk about those kinds of things but it's just astonishing how long this has been going on i mean it's 30 years you know 30 years and things have only gotten worse they haven't gotten better yeah um yeah yeah this uh you know i was just surprised at how much i liked this movie i wasn't sure what it was going to be like because i hadn't seen it in so long man i like I remember kind of like Candyman being like kind of this big scary um, guy, but like I don't remember much else. And I remember he had a hook. And um, interestingly, uh, Matt, this is one of the only slasher movies in the horror canon with a black serial killer as the villain. Is this technically a slasher? I mean, I guess it. I guess it is because he. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it could maybe be, but uh, that that was something. I was like, oh, you know what? You're right. There's not 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 any that I could think of. Any other movies? I can't think of any off the top of my head either. I mean, some of the more modern films, I guess you would say, like in Us, I still probably wouldn't. Con- well, I mean, I guess that's a slasher because they. <laughs> They did do uh, some slashing <laughs> with scissors. Yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess, us is kind of, but it's it's not a. It's not like one big bad villain. Yeah, not like yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, like Jason or like Nightmare on Elm Street or Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You know, it's not one big bad. That one is like a lot of different people. Yeah, it's hard to explain. Yeah, hard to explain yeah. that one. And, yeah. Uh, do we? I think we did that for the pod, didn't we? Us? Yeah. No, uh, I don't. I don't know if we've. I don't think we reviewed us. I don't think so. Yeah, we might have to put that down for a future Harvest Horror Fest because that's a, that's a good one. That's a pretty good film. Not as good as uh, Get Out, but it it was still a pretty good film by Jordan Peele. I liked it. Yeah, Get Out was just awesome. What a great movie to start off your directing and like horror entry as a director. That was a great. Speak movie. Speak about social commentary. Jeez. Oh yeah. So, well, all right, Mike. Well, what what do you want to spoil about Candyman? I mean, I I I know I kind of broad stroked it there going w- directly for the social issues, but um, you know, the the urban legend in this uh, apparently is supposed to be a real one in the Chicago area, and it is somewhat of a combination of uh this this guy who's hitchhiking with the hook and and Bloody Mary. Um kind of combined together you know because the bloody mary is supposed to be when you say it in the mirror and and then the the guy with the murderous hook so it's kind of that um it's definitely interesting to to see that um there actually was a candy man killer uh that had nothing to do with this movie or this area 
where he used candy to lure little boys and then yeah anyway it was bad yeah that sounds pretty horrific mike i don't really want to watch that one yeah no it was bad it was bad well all right mike what what else you want to want to add or discuss about the uh the candy man Matt, uh, there was some controversy with this movie, or there's several things controversial about this movie. Did you think it hella had a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, black stereotypes in it? Oh, I, yeah, definitely. I, I didn't... Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know about a lot, but, like, the projects, like, there was no white people or Mexican or any other races in the project. It was all black people. The cleaning ladies were all black women. Uh, when she was first starting to do her investigation, I see that, and then they were all talking. Oh, you're right. They pretty, were pretty, yeah, stereotypical, and not really realistic. I guess is a good way to put it. That was more towards the beginning of the film, though. But still, it was in there. Yeah. Um, uh, an interesting fact about this movie is they really did shoot some of the movie in the uh, Cabrini Green uh, neighborhood, and uh, as part of the terms of doing that they had to have extras that were actually residents of the area so i think some of the gang members that you see in this in the in the beginning are real gang members in that neighborhood at the time and they were there for protection so wow that's interesting so they could sh- shoot the movie yeah pretty crazy shows you how uh how much gang stuff has changed too because i remember a few of those scenes they were very brightly uh, dressed with purples and blues and reds and oranges. Yes, they were. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty. It's pretty different than today. Yeah. Um, so that was interesting. Um, like I alluded to earlier, Matt, um, I really liked the buildup of this. How you didn't see what was happening a lot, and you just kind of saw the aftermath. Although extremely gory, um, poignant, and then uh, really only once you kind of see something but it's not really it's like it's implied still are you talking about uh, when, the doctor when, uh, getting in the, the, the doctor in the yeah, chest? It's, yeah. It's, yeah it's kind of implied you don't really see it until it's done i kind of like that i i thought that was a better way of doing it it's definitely a unique way of shooting uh, granted it probably was for budget restrictions not creativity but who knows yeah um and then uh another interesting fact on this movie was the bees they bred them just for this movie, and apparently they're young bees, and they can't really sting as well. And so for the scenes where the bees are all over them, that's, you know, that's real bees. And uh, uh, just tried to, they put like a scent or pheromone of the queen bee, and that's how they like got them to be on them. But apparently getting them off was like a weird process with like a vacuum, like a, a bee-safe vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> and it would like slowly take them off, and uh, I guess it was an experience. And and Tony Todd had written in his contract, uh, every bee stung, he got a thousand dollars. Nice um, bonus. And uh, he's made he made several Candyman movies, and I think he got stung twenty three times in all those movies. So he's got he got an extra twenty three grand. That's not that's not too bad. Only twenty three times in several films, but. Dude, that that one, I mean, that's going to give me nightmares towards the end where they have all the bees in their mouths and they're like making out. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Dude, that was real. That, that, ugh. Hard pass, dude. Um, There's also some weird stuff. I don't know if this is real or not, but I was reading on the trivia on IMDb that uh, Virginia Madison, who played uh, the character Helen Lyle, was hypnotized for some of her scenes when she was with the Candyman, and that's why she's so like weird um and they like use some trigger words but i don't know if that's real or not i don't know it seems weird well what was unique was um the first time she meets the Candyman in the parking garage she's like just straight normal and then as it cuts to him and it cuts back to her her eyes get progressively redder and redder I don't know if you caught that or not. That was pretty. That was a pretty unique little detail. So it was like he was slowly like controlling her. Yeah, and then that leads to the next scene, which is like, oh. Um, so uh, I don't know, man. It, it was uh, this movie was surprisingly really well done, and I think it held up pretty decently um, with today's standards and stuff. It, you know, ninety two. This thing's still pretty scary. I think it's a very good film. And I'm not much into the horror slash slasher, you know, film genres, but I 
I pay my respects to a good film, and this is a good film. And uh, I would definitely watch it again. I kind of wish I had it on Blu-ray or would have rented it instead of watching it on sci-fi. But hey, you know what? It worked. All right, man. Well, um, with that, uh, let's see. Do we have anything else to talk about? Oh, what are we going to do next week, Matt? Well, Mike, since it is not a Harvest Horror Fest qualified film, and it just came out, and it's still getting quite a bit of buzz, and we all know that the day after election is probably going to be a little rough because we're all going to be upset because election is not going to be... The outcome probably will not be out for maybe early next year. Who knows? So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of frustrations. So we're going to do a comedy and a Halloween-based comedy. The new Adam Sandler film, uh, Hubie Halloween, I believe is the name, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's it. Hubie Halloween on uh, Netflix streaming. And uh, it it has had some uh, buzz a little bit. Uh, I think one of the people that's in it did a cameo from Massachusetts and uh, I think she lost her job for doing that movie. Something about her contract or something. Oh, that sucks. Well, it'll be just fun. It'll be nice to, you know, review something that's a little bit more lighthearted and not political because our other selection that we were discussing was Borat. And I don't know, maybe we'll review that in the future, but Borat, especially this latest one is uh, quite political. They went after like Rudy Giuliani or something in it. So we can wait a little bit on that one. Yeah, yeah, we can we can kind of try and skip the politics. I mean, everyone is probably getting just inundated with stuff. So I know I am. Massive amount of text messages, um, all kinds of uh, advertising on everything, every form of any media or anything. And so I'm so tired. I can't wait until it's Dude, over. Dude, I no joke get 50 spam texts a day. Like, no joke, at least 50, if not more. I don't like being in a swing state, and Arizona is a swing state this this election cycle, and it's um, it's pretty crazy, it's pretty wild. So, all right, Mike. Well, uh, uh, go ahead. Um, since this is the final Harvest Horror Fest, and you are the Harvest Horror Fest master of ceremonies, go ahead, go go with your reels first, sir, for 1992's Candyman. Uh, I'm going to give this one four and a half reels. I thought this movie is uh, fantastic, and uh, you guys should definitely go watch it if you haven't seen it. Um, it is kind of creepy and disturbing, but it's well done. Well, Mike, you once again beat me, but I know you have a super soft spot and affinity for the horror films, so it's kind of not surprising, but it is surprising, but it's not because you're harsh, but you love these films. So, Mike, I give 1992's Candyman... Four out of five reels. I really enjoyed it. I definitely agree. If you've not seen it ever and you're okay with a little bit of blood, guts, and gore and being a little freaked out, definitely watch it. It is well worth it. It is a great film. All right, man. Well, I, you know, I like it when we don't always match, Matt, although we tend to follow suit in a lot of our opinions. I, I, I enjoy when we both like like you hate the movie and I love it. That's my favorite. You but just like to argue. Obviously. Yeah, no, the argument is fun. I think I think our listeners like it too. Yeah, it is. It can be very fun, especially when it's, you know, hot garbage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why is it so hot? Is it is there ever cold garbage? Well, there, of course there's cold garbage, but the hot garbage is extra smelly. Ah, okay. All right. You know, gotcha. And when you walk up it, it's like steaming. It's just ugh. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, uh Matt, uh I guess with that, um you want to take us out of here? Okay, Mike. I will, since it's the last time I'll do this for a full year. No, probably not. I don't know. We change it up sometimes. Don't forget to check us out on the socials, Real Film Nerds or at Real Film Nerds. That's R-E-E-L. We are on the Instagrams, the Twitters, the Facebooks, the Facebook groups. Not the Snaps. Uh, not any of the other ones. Because let's just face it, there's way too many social medias. And we can only do so much. All right? Oh, you were going to say something, Mike. Go ahead. That's true. There's just so many social media media things. Like, But that one, QB or whatever, is shutting down. So there's one less. Quibi's out. Yeah, and Quibi isn't really a social media. Quibi, Quibi is a uh, video platform. It was like quick snippet little video platforms. And that was a bad idea to begin with. And they put like so much money into it. And it's just, ugh. It was like a wannabe Vine, but uh, it sucked. No, TikTok is still going, though. Everybody loves them, their TikToks. 
So, all right. Well, uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in and listening to our podcast again. Don't forget to enter our giveaway for a free copy of Spell. We only have so many. So if you want to watch a new movie that sounds like it's a whole lot of fun and definitely spooky, hit us up and uh, we'll put you in there for the drawing to get one. So other than that, thanks, everybody, for listening and go watch as many movies as you can. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie.